My goal is to unpack the central part of this network. The colors come from community detection, and we can see from the colors that we have different clusters. I want to separate them better, and I have to give less room to the periphery. I am acting on two different settings of the layout algorithm. On the one hand, I am activating the stronger gravity setting that keeps all the nodes in a tight space. I have to tune the gravity setting so that the, the sparse areas do not take too much space, but without the clusters being completely compressed together. At the same time, I am activating the lean log and energy model because it provides a better separability between clusters. This requires me to change the scaling setting if I want to keep a similar network size. It's a balancing act between the two and it takes me a few iterations. I am leaving the layout run for a few minutes to give it a chance to unpack better. It's not uncommon to obtain a significant improvement by giving the layout a few hours of time. But in this case, it turned out not making much of a difference. Once again, I am using the prevent overlap setting, but only in the end to help separate the nodes visually. When comparing to the draft visualization, it's relatively similar, which will make my life easier. Yet I, I have also reached my goal. The clusters are better separated in the central part and the periphery takes less space. I am using a last trick to improve the readability of the visualization. I am computing the between centrality and I am showing only the labels of the nodes with the highest score on that metric. The size of the node on the label is still the in degree but the nodes with a low betweenness centrality do not have their label displayed. We cannot read all the labels anyway. So that, that's just a trick to make the final image easier to read. I will now prepare the rendering of the image. First of all, I will remove the colors because those were just temporary help. And I do not want the reader to take those computed clusters too seriously. I do not want these colors to interfere with the clusters that I will be later uh, delineating. My priority is that we see where the nodes are, where they make clusters. The edges are not that important to display because their information is baked into the position of the nodes anyway through the action of the layout. So the links are in the distribution of the nodes in space, if you want. But displaying the edges still gives a complement of information to these visual clusters. So as long as I can see the labels over the nodes and the nodes over the edges and the edges over the background, then the network map is good enough. So the first thing that I pay attention to is how dark are the edges, the nodes and the labels. The second thing that I pay attention to is that the edges are thin enough that we see where they are. I do not want them to be just like a big uniform gray mass. I'm satisfied with this image and from there I will be annotating the image in a drawing software. Here I'm using just Illustrator. I am basically reassessing all the clusters I have previously found and I am demarcating them a bit better. I am using a very thick line to make it clear that the demarcation is not very precise. Indeed, some clusters overlap and interfere in this network. That ambiguity is in fact baked into the data and my job is to reflect it in my annotations. For each cluster, I am double checking whether my initial label still holds or if I can do better. The layout is also a little bit different. So sometimes that, that makes a difference to where I see the boundaries of the clusters and what the label might be. This is the sausage cluster, for instance. I know that the cluster itself consists of sausages, but here I can be a bit more precise and also include sausage, hot dog and salami. Those are not in the cluster because they connect with other parts. For instance, the hot dog is also a sandwich and we also have a sandwich cluster. But here I will just improve a little bit my annotation and when I can do it at least. Uh, it's not always possible, but here with sausage it works, so I'm doing it. I just keep doing that for all of the clusters. If you look closely, you will see that some clusters overlap it's intentional. This is just my annotation reflecting the fact that some empirical categories actually overlap. I have used two colors to alleviate the confusion and make it easier to read the map, but those colors have no meaning. I found some new clusters like the dumplings, I dropped others like sauces, and I have found better delineated clusters like the Italian cuisine. We better see how central it is. 
Here is another example of overlap. The little cluster about apples is nice and clear, but if we follow the edges, we see that it strongly connects to apple pie, apple cake, and apple strudel. I could include apple pie and apple cake in my boundaries, but not apple strudel, because it's too far. Yet, in terms of structure, that one is really in both clusters, uh, pastry and apples. Displaying the edges is helpful in such situations. The annotations are always a simplification, and we should always double check the edges, if we can, to understand the real boundaries of the clusters. Anyways, this is my network map. Um, in the next video, I will summarize my observations, and I will sketch an interpretation.